If you're looking for that perfect pint, we've got a specialty brew for you. Then we'll uncover the secret to Whistler Blackcomb's outdoor skating rink. We'll jump on the gondola for some fresh tracks and we'll find out some tuning tips to keep your skis in shape for the rest of the season. Stick around, that's on this episode of Go See to Sky. Welcome to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts in Whistler's Olympic Plaza, where there's all sorts of fun happening from sledding to skating and everything in between. Well, whether it's for your apres or maybe a summer barbecue, finding that perfect pale ale or stout can be a tough decision. So why not stick with a local brewery? At How Sound in Squamish, they've been brewing for close to 20 years and have nearly 45 different kinds, so there's something for everyone. And their small shop is what makes them unique. From breaking down grains to bottling their brews and even pouring the perfect pint, at the House Sound Brewing Company, it's all done under the same roof. Hi, Paul. Heather. How's it going? Great. All right, I'm pretty familiar with your brews, but I want to know how they're made. No problem. Let's go check them out. Okay. Opened in 1996, How Sound Brewing continues to work out of the same small shop, but the brand is bigger than ever. It's grown from simple pale ale to nearly 45 specialty brews. Seasonal drafts come and go, but classics stay for good, some of which hold North American titles. The market pretty much demands them now that you have something unique. Just as unique as the brews are the names that go with them. Often drafted by employees, they stem from local people or places and even events out of this world. The uh, Super Jupiter was one that just popped up when they had that new planet and they called it the Super Jupiter. That was a name that we just like, wait, let's call the beer Super Jupiter. But before the name comes the beer, and that all starts here in the grain room. These are the specialty grains and then we have a silo outside that holds 20 tons of uh, the basic malt. But these are our specialties, so if we're going to make a stout, we would use these dark malts. And you have kind of a medium malt, so you'd use more of this in a medium type body beer. With more than 20 types of specialty Canadian malts at his fingertips, brewery manager Paul Wilson is able to make a wide variety of beers. The grain is processed through a mill, cracking each one into roughly six pieces. From there, it runs down into a mash tun. So this is the brew house. So if somebody asks you the size of your brew house, this is, this is what you would say. You would say the size of your kettle. They're asking you how much beer you can brew. Brewing just 2,000 litres at a time means small batches and more room for variety. There's a lot of care that goes into each batch for sure. The milled malt sits in the mash tun for about an hour at 70 degrees Celsius, steeping the malts and releasing the sugars. Then it's transferred to the kettle, the hops are added and it boils for another hour. If there's any spices, generally they'll go into the kettle. Every once in a while we'll put something in the mash tun, but we did the uh, Super Jupiter. That's, uh, I actually put real grapefruits in the mash tun. Like a steep tea, the boiling brew begins to release a rich aroma of specialty malts, a sign it's reached its peak and must be cooled before being transferred to the primary fermenters. We put it through a heat exchange, and the reason to cool it down, if it was too hot, uh, you'd kill the yeast when you add the yeast, or if it's too cold, the yeast won't be active. So the yeast needs about 20 degrees Celsius is the ideal temperature. Once cooled, it ferments within these tanks for close to seven days. Then it spends another week in conditioning tanks. And once that's complete, it all ends up here, put in cans, kegs or bottles. As with every step so far, it's all done by hand on one small assembly line. And the labels, they're as unique as the names and the brews that go with them. But in the end, it all comes down to taste. And our final stop on this tour is the perfect place for it. Cheers, Paul. Cheers. Thanks for agreeing. I like the reaction I get from people. That's why I like brewing beer. It's an instant kind of gratification when I see people drinking it and when they enjoy it. So. Whether you venture towards a unique brew or stick with a classic pale ale, here you're guaranteed to find something you enjoy with big flavor and small brew house charm.
The House Sound Brewing Company is open for public tours every day at 4 p.m. So why not take a tour and maybe you'll discover a new brew you can enjoy for that evening. Perhaps something you'll enjoy while listening to the sounds of Bear Mountain. They're a local BC born band and they've toured all over Canada and abroad. And recently they opened their Gastown studio to us. Bear Mountain have been noticed for their debut album XO this year, but also for their high energy, visually stunning live shows. Band member Kenji Rodriguez marries his imagery to the music of frontman Ian Bevis. It was a solo project in the beginning. Uh, I was just making, you know, dance music in my basement or like hip hop music or just like and he just experimenting with electronic music. Uh, and then I started playing it live um, and realized I needed a band to kind of bring it to its full expression. This music all kind of starts um, produced on Ian's laptop, like in Ableton, so that's just a uh, software program and like synths and stuff like that. And then that just gets taken into a live context where it just gets like fleshed out by a band. You know, I play drums and he plays bass and um, you just kind of like build on it from there. We all started just playing in bands with no like DJ background. We build the tracks in the computer and I just kind of get everything to a nice level where I think it's, it's done or it's, it's kind of like a, a full song idea is there. Um, and then we go to the band and then in our practice space um, we start adding, mixing, taking out instruments uh, and actually playing it live. EXO just came out, how would you describe this record? What might you compare it to? I mean, a lot of people say it has the feeling of, of hopefulness or that something great and amazing is about to happen or could happen at any moment. Um, and that's kind of the feeling I think of when I was making the record. That feeling you're on the verge of something incredible or you know that kind of feeling inside your heart is like about to happen. That's kind of the feeling. The butterflies? The butterflies. Yeah, the butterflies. It's kind of like the butterflies in your stomach. You seem to be a band with strong feelings about the whole experience, visually and the music. How important is that to you guys? Uh, it's really important to us. I mean, I've always said it's it's sort of 50-50, you know? I think you have to put on a really good live show or just have um, an experience, right? Like, you want to draw people in and um, create a moment with them, you know? You want to, like, I think that's what we're after all our shows, just have at least one or two points in the show, just, like, have a moment with your crowd. And we're, they're giving you energy and you're giving them energy and you just all experience something together. Now we have um, triangles that we're, that are on stage that are actually like um, sheets that Kenji's projecting onto and we, we interact with the triangles in a different way like um, so my kick drum on the drums will trigger something on the triangles uh, so it'll trigger the lights or um, some visual component so we're actually interacting with Kenji live. You should be kissed at all. New music is always being developed with Bear Mountain, and you can keep up to date with their news by liking their Facebook page. Well, that is some great Canadian music. Now, if you'd like to see this story again, or perhaps you may have missed one of our full shows, not to worry, everything's available online. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go see the sky, we're your local voice. Coming up. I had to find a workshop. Nobody's very happy for you to have an open flame inside their wooden cabin. Her studio is as original as the beautiful beads she makes. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Hi folks, Don Taylor here. Need a lift? At Levin Machinery, they sell, rent, lease, and service machinery, big and small, for your material handling needs. And they offer certified training. Stack it, reach it, lift it, lev it. 
one in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, in Whistler's Olympic Plaza, where the skating rink is open seven days a week for you to enjoy. Here you can skate under the stars and enjoy some time with family and friends in a relaxed outdoor atmosphere. But it's not always that cold down here in Whistler's Village. So how does that ice stay so pristine? Well, we took a behind the scenes tour to see what goes on under the ice. Hey Chris. Hi Heather. Hey, how are you? I'm great, how about you? Good, so you're really getting some work done here. Working on it. Working on it. Safety is a big thing here at the ice rink. Definitely, yeah. We want our guests to be safe and happy. Um, Staff cover each concrete pillar with thick foam, padding sharp corners and edges to make the outdoor rink as safe as possible. That comes after they've installed the hundreds of feet of boards that surround the rink. Each one of these small boards is actually an individual piece. We have over 80 of them that go around the perimeter here, uh, all in varying sizes. It takes several weeks to transform Whistler's Olympic Plaza into an outdoor skating paradise, accessible to everyone from mid-December to the end of March. Chris, this is a beautiful ice rink and hundreds of people get to come and enjoy it all winter long, but it's not always that cold here in the village. Uh, so how do you keep it cold? Well, why don't you come up to me and I'll show you. All right. Okay, Heather, so over here, um, we've lifted up the boards to let you have a look at what's actually under the rink. Beneath the ice and slabs of concrete lies a maze of refrigeration pipe. Installed two years ago, 28,000 feet of pipe housing special brine run back and forth across both skating levels four inches apart. It's a solution of salt and water so that we can get it down to a very cold temperature without it freezing and still pump it through the system. A nice surface of this size requires a complete refrigeration plant to pump the brine through the entire system, and that is located just around the corner. So this is the refrigeration plant? That's right. Um, our plant here has two 50 horsepower compressors. They do the main mechanical work of the system. The compressors, chiller and condensers all work together, keeping the brine cool while pumping it through the pipes beneath the ice. Machines keep the ice cold, but it's a hands-on job maintaining the surface. So Chris, you've got one of your crew members out there flooding with the hose, but you only flood with the hose while you're prepping the ice for the winter. That's right, this is just to build the ice surface. Uh, we want to build it to a depth of about an inch and a half. Staff spend days flooding to create the base. Once complete, a small Zamboni is used to scrape and flood the ice a few times a day throughout the winter. Well, Chris, thank you so much for having me here today. I love skating at an outdoor rink, so I am just pumped to put my skates on and come out here. Great, we'll look forward to seeing you. Well, the skating rink is open from 11 to 9 p.m. and skate rentals are available. It's a very unique place here in the village, almost as unique as the workspace in our next story. Nicola Griffiths has a knack for making beautiful handcrafted glass beads, but that involves a hot torch and that made it a challenge when she was trying to find a place to work. And with no luck here in the village, she decided to make her own. It's as intriguing as her beautiful beads. It's really interesting and fun to do. Working with glass is just awesome because it just changes. It's fun to work with, really. Using a hot torch and a glass rod, Nicola Griffiths works to create one of her favourite winter beads, a snowman. I'm very lucky to be able to make things 
just tiny, detailed. My beads are very detailed and a lot of care goes into them. Detailed is an understatement. Griffith's intricate beads are unique in their shape, colors, and of course size. The process of flame working requires a steady hand, a creative mind, and plenty of patience. All reasons why this ski instructor, originally from England, took up the craft just a few years ago. I saw someone doing it and I thought, well, I'd really like to try that. And I think I'd be good at it because I've got lots of patience. I love art. Encouraged by her artistic parents, Griffith spent several summers honing her skills in their garage on the Isle of Man. Soon after, Nico Beads was formed, and this young artist was selling her work at markets both here in Whistler and abroad. But gaining her Canadian residency and settling into Whistler full-time would add another challenge to her delicate work. Then I had to find a workshop. Yeah, that was a difficult thing because most pro properties here are rentals and nobody's very happy for you to have an open flame inside their wooden cabin. So it was quite difficult. It was suggested she could set up shop in a van and that's exactly what she did, complete with shelving, a spacious work area and a ventilation system. Rich with character, the mobile workshop can go anywhere. It was brilliant, it was just perfect because it's, it's high up um, you can walk around in it, it's got skylights. The open door allows for easy demonstrations at local markets, offering customers a first-hand glimpse of how a simple glass rod can be melted and transformed into a beautiful bead within minutes. Plus, an open door policy means several suggestions. I tried to make every animal that I could think of. Plus, children come and they watch me do the demonstrations and I ask them to think of some inspiration. So children give me lots of ideas. Making sure not to heat the glass too quickly, otherwise it will spark, Griffiths delicately turns her stick while strategically choosing different colors. Melting each glass rod ever so slightly, she adds a unique tone to her most famous creation, the Whistler bead, infused with the colors of a Whistler summer. So it's got the blues for the lakes, and then it's got a bit of mountain, and then it's got some like gold glitter and then it's got the sunset and the sky. So it's got quite a lot of colours in one bead. The initial request came from a customer, but this artist found much of her inspiration in the landscapes that surround her. I just see beauty in glass, and Whistle's a beautiful place to live. So I get lots of inspiration here. You can find Nicola Griffiths at farmers markets throughout the Sea to Sky corridor all summer long. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Go Sea to Sky. We'd love to hear from you. Perhaps you have a comment or maybe even a story idea. Get in touch with us at facebook.com slash go sea to sky. Later in the show. By waxing it and hydrating the base, you're keeping a healthy base. A little ski wax can go a long way. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Hi folks, it's me, Don Taylor, way up here with my friend Murph. At Levitt Machinery, they sell, lease, rent, and service all these machines, and they offer certified training. Need a lift? Stack it, reach it, lift it. Levitt. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world. Daily on Shaw TV.
Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Bus in Whistler's Olympic Plaza, where it's a little rainy at the moment, but up on the mountain, the conditions are fantastic. And if you're heading up there, why not jump on the gondola a little earlier? Grab yourself a Fresh Tracks ticket, jump on the gondola at 7.15 and enjoy a mountainside breakfast. And then, that's right, you get the first tracks. Once the patrollers say you're good to go, you get to enjoy the mountain all to yourself. It's dark, the sun hasn't even bothered to roll out of bed yet, but skiers and snowboarders sleepily stack up at the Whistler Village Gondola. Each holds a golden ticket for the 7.15 a.m. upload, a Fresh Tracks voucher which promises untracked powder and a hot breakfast. We are the coffeeless, but not the earliest of risers. The groomers start working at 3 p.m., so as soon as the mountain shuts down, they're up there and they're grooming, and we have 20 in total. So 10 on Whistler Mountain, 10 on Black Hole Mountain. Night and day, day and night. It's all about readying for the moment, the chance to hear the snow song, an aria that demands solitude and virgin snow. There's literally no one on the mountain. It's just yourself and a few other people. Um, and it's fresh powder, so it's almost like you're floating on top of the snow down the mountain. So it's just, it's an, a magical experience. Good morning. Our powder pilgrimage begins with a 25-minute gondola ride to the top of Whistler Mountain. The regular public won't ascend for another hour and 15 minutes. Precious minutes. But we aren't allowed to run for the powder just yet. We are the gatekeepers, so we're mountain safety every morning and we have to keep everybody in the building until we get clearance from grooming an avalanche. So instead we follow our noses into the warm embrace of the roundhouse where a feast awaits. We have cold cereals, hot cereals, some fresh fruit, there's some treats such as croissants, banana bread and lemon loaf, and then you get into the full breakfast variety of pancakes, french toast, sausage, bacon, of course lots of syrup on top. I even managed to pile on some healthy choices like fresh fruit and yogurt. My plate was as big as the mountain I would soon ski. Snowfall outside counted down each second before unleashing us early risers onto the hill. A canvas of pure white today. When it's not snowy um, and it is a clear day, you can see the entire valley, so it's actually fantastic views. Fresh tracks, it's, it's great for powder, but for those who want to see the corduroy, it's also fantastic. The bell rang and we were off, charging outside for a sweet taste of silence. Just you, the powder and the hill. Fresh tracks, an awakening even without the coffee. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Well, that looks worth it just for the breakfast. And if you're going to head up on the mountain, why not make it worth your while? Take care of your equipment and you'll be sure to have even more fun on the hill. Waxing your skis and your boards is critical for performance and care. Sure, you can take it to any one of Whistler's pro tuning shops, but why not do it yourself? We are heading in towards the mid-season for skiers and snowboarders, hanging out with Phil Lake at Skis and Bikes. Phil, you're a ski tech here, and you're going to show me how to wax my own skis at home. Yep. Is it hard? Pretty easy to do. Now, for the most part, you know, if people need their bases ground or edges done, obviously they can bring them into one of the many shops here in Whistler. Um, but just keeping the bases healthy is easy to do, maybe every week or every other week at home. Yeah, we recommend around once a week to have your bases waxed. Okay, so how do we do it? So, start off with having your ski bases around a room temperature um, warmth before you start putting wax on them. Um, let your iron warm up to a hot temperature and then just do a quick, of the length of the ski, a drip line of wax down. One nice long drip line. Now you're using a red wax right now, but yep. obviously there's so many different colors and kinds. Yeah. Anything you recommend? Right now it depends on the brand you use, but because it's such warm temperatures, a yellow wax okay. is pretty good to go with. Sounds good. So we've dripped our wax here on the ski, now what? Now just start from your tip and always keep your wax iron moving and just spread the wax out throughout the ski. Just going back and forth. So the wax just spreads throughout the ski like a liquid and it's just soaking into the base right now? Yep. And you're using a professional ski wax iron. Uh, you can obviously buy those at most ski stores. You could technically use an old iron, right? 
You could. <laughs> It's you just could. hard with the clothing iron to monitor the temperature. Right, so we want to keep our iron at a certain temperature. Yeah. And that is? Around 250 degrees. So you're making this look pretty easy. You are a ski tech, but could someone do this at home? Oh yeah, it's very easy to do. So how do we know that this is done? You did that pretty quickly. You'll see that the wax starts to seep into the base quite nicely. And as soon as the length of the ski is like that, you are finished waxing as far as that goes. Once that's done, just let it sit for around 20 minutes till it gets back to room temperature, and then they're good to scrape. Once they're cooled down to room temperature, have a nice sharp scraper and just start scraping it from tip to tail, removing all the wax. You're just basically peeling off excess wax that didn't seep into the base of the ski. Yep. Just want to get as much as you can off the ski. Why is it important to remove that wax once you put it on? Because it's the actual chemicals in the wax that create your ski to glide. It creates a, uh, like a hydroplane by melting the snow and uh, your bases will plane over the water. So once you've scraped the ski, are we done? Nope, after you're done scraping, you'll grab like a nylon brush okay. and from tip to tail again you'll just scrape and that'll get out <clears throat> all that excess wax out of the pores of the ski. Okay, so you're almost making tiny, 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 minuscule little grooves in the ski now with your brush. Yep. And what's that doing? It's uh, almost, it's giving the base of the ski a little bit of a structure just to help with uh, creating that glide against the snow. Why do this? You told us earlier, once a week, why wax your skis? Why keep your bases healthy, basically? Um, waxing your skis is like hydrating the base almost, so it stops the bases from drying out. And a lot of people have issues with their skis sticking to the snow in different temperatures. And by waxing it and hydrating the base, you're keeping a healthy base. Sounds great. Just like our skin, you want to yeah. keep the base of your ski nice and healthy so you can enjoy a nice long winter. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. You're welcome. Believe me, a little ski wax can go a long way, especially if you want to beat your buddies to the lift line. Well, that does it for this episode of Go See the Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. with Moto, Vancouver's only local car sharing co-op. What's car sharing? It's thousands of people sharing the cost and access to hundreds of cars. Car sharing offers a reliable alternative to car ownership, fits your lifestyle, and saves you money. With 300 cars, trucks, and even cargo vans, Moto offers the lowest rates in Metro Vancouver. And booking a Moto is easy, online or by phone. Join, book, go. Learn more at moto.coop. It started out like any other spring morning. A morning that I'll never forget. I was an energetic and adventurous four-year-old. I'd been an electrician for 30 years. Without warning, our lives were changed forever. My dog's bark woke me up, and the house was filled with smoke. The pain was unbearable. It's physical and emotional scars. You don't grow up thinking you'll be a burn survivor. 
It just happens. But there is hope. We support burn survivors on their long journey to recovery. Give today 